should be preparing. Okay. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good evening. It's um, January 12th, 2021, a reorg meeting, our first meeting of the year. Uh, so I'd like to have a roll call. Uh, Madam Clerk, please. Council Member Christine Adams asks. Oh, one second. She is logging in as we speak. Okay, we'll wait. Council Member Christine Adamsack, we're taking taking roll call. I'm here. Very good. Council Member Linda Hammer. I'm here. Council Member Gerald Kaminsky. Present. Council Member Brian Noah. Present. Council Member Brian Polarski. Present. Council Member Richard Rusinia. And Supervisor Diane Benchkowski. Here. here. I'm not sure if yeah. Rick is joining us. I haven't heard he's I not. Do not have, I do not here. have him there. Okay, so just let him in and make a note when he does join the meeting. Okay. Oh. Hmm. Gary, could you mute yourself? Is it? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> He's carrying on a conversation here. All right. First uh, item of discussion tonight is our winter spring programming. We have uh, Jillian Gorman King. Jill, you're there. Good morning. Or good morning. Good uh, evening, everybody. I just wanted to um, make sure that everybody received the email I sent out with all the programming that we've been planning as well as the um, opening plans or the COVID plans. Can anybody know if they haven't? I can forward that right now. I think we're all good. Um, great. So if not, uh, main, mainly what we're doing, everything is going to be starting February 1st that we're planning on. Uh, nothing will start before then because I wanted to reach out to all the members of the supervisor at this meeting. Once we receive the go-ahead for whatever we'd be doing, that will then allow one and a half weeks for registration purposes. Um, and then, you know, we can get everything started. Some other programming that we're looking at, um, like our Special Olympics, um, and some of our Saturday program shooting more for a mid to end of March so that we can focus on doing those outside as much as possible, um, if not all the time. The other programs of being indoors would be maxed at Alexander. They'd be maxed at 10 participants. Um, the smart participants and 10 parents, um, the other ones would be and then we would allow one parent in to um, wait for the child. It would be in a separate area. The ones that at the end of it is still only practices right now or skills training, um, we are allowing 25 people um, since that is a larger um, site that we have. So the I mentioned that I'd like to get the conversation started on um, are some summer ones, are the, the pool, summer concerts, um, and our softball program. We okay. obviously ran the softball. Okay. Can we just go back yeah. and the winter spring? Sure. I, I was just doing a quick overview. So everybody knew kind of what I was addressing. Um, yeah, I was just so the, those, that's what we'll be addressing um, there. Those are obviously, I just want to get the conversation started. The other okay. one in our spring, we're, we're going to be doing our uh, bringing back our gymnastics program, our soccer program, our basketball program, and we're actually also looking into doing um, adult yoga since we can socially distance for that as well. Um, those would be the ones running. Um, I know I'm forgetting one right now. Hang on. So they're not Let me open this because we, we're going to have the sheet. They they should be on the document. Smart Start Soccer. Um, you know, that stuff is on, there's a couple different documents. We're also going to be starting in February back our learn to skate, which will be capping at, like I said, the 20 kids and then five staff. So it would again, be capped at the 25 um, and the learn to play as well. Um, those will be over at the ice rink. 
as I said, the ones here are mainly your smart start or your building with the soccer, the basketball, the gymnastics, and um, where's the other? Let me open the other document for you. Um, yeah, and then um, so those would be the sports programs, and then our Super Saturdays, what we'd be focusing on, um, like end of March, early to bring kids back in or at Alexandria again. Um, so we can do majority of our activities outside. So obviously the, the uh, policies are all still pretty much the same. I believe since we're in orange, we can still keep the uh, 10 participants here. The ice rink, the ice rinks um, around town have actually received for 50% capacity. We weren't comfortable with that. We kept it at the 25. At the current time, we're not doing spectators. Once learn to skate start, we will allow um, parents in not to spectate, but to uh, tie skates and help assist the, the um, youth getting ready as well as hockey will be doing that and then the parent will have to leave as soon as they're done with that um, um, uh, I'm what, trying to think of any does anybody have any questions the gymnastics um, sure right now you could only have like the parent stays right so you could only have five kids at a time doing gymnastics say that again does the parent say that again the, the gymnastics the three-year-old program Yes. The parents do not stay for that program. Oh, okay. okay. It just says yeah, parent they don't separate. They stay in a separate area. They stay um, in the what we um, would call like the area or we have enough benches in the hallway that we can socially distance them there since there's only 10 participants. And actually last time, two or three of our participants were siblings. So we only had about um, like seven to eight parents at the max stay mm -hmm. but they do not go and the only parents that go in the gym smart start soccer and smart start basketball they're actually separated out um the child they're all we try and give them you know even more than six feet um and and they stay in their specific area and it's mainly skill building um and our instructor stays in the middle and just kind of um states what they're going to do and then the parent it's the parent's job to kind of institute it and the instructor um will just look on and offer corrections as needed but they won't actually be going around or anything very much mm -hmm. jill it's chris adams zach will mm -hmm. they be limiting how many students will be participating this year um uh, we'll be doing 10 for now um 10 participants and and start start, it would also be 10 parents as well. And then a, as the ice rink will be mandating five since that's a bigger site. Um, we're trying to start them so that we have enough to do two sessions so we can get kids in as well. Um, we're trying to do shorter five-week sessions so we can actually do two of them. So then 20 kids could essentially do it as opposed to just 10. But we are, we are capping them, Christine. Okay. We're keeping it at the 10. I believe that was changed. It's just what we're comfortable with, honestly. Um, we, and we'd like to try it out again first because we also waited till February. We've been hearing about the surge and everything. We wanted to make sure um, things had kind of come to cancel or push things back. Um, so we wanted to make sure that, you know, we, we kind of knew what to expect before we started things up, um, with participants again. Any other questions on winter, spring, the yoga, we would probably cap at, depending on where it was, if it's in the mall purpose room, we can do 15 people. Um, but we probably still try and keep it around 10 or whatever, you know, board felt comfortable with since it's adults, I feel more comfortable to it more people because I know that they're usually better about staying socially distanced and everything. Oh, and the other, um, during all these programs, everybody will be wearing their times. Um, the only time at the ice rink will be off is um, when hockey is in press, we're um, 
I believe at Learn to Skate, we're going to be mandating that they keep them on, on the ice. Um, it's Diane Benchkowski again, Jill. How is it that you can yep. have more than 10 uh, participants doing yoga? It depends on the size of the room. If we do the multi-purpose room, it can, you know, it's like double the size. So we could spread them out a lot more. Um, if we were able to utilize that room, if it was the gym, we'd keep it at 10. If we could do a bigger room, we could do more. If you want us to keep it at 10, I'm fine with that. Well, I just was wondering um, if the governor think, his executive order. It will basically sports and regulation guidelines. It's, it's actually, um, really confusing because what we've seen mm -hmm. is, um, now a 50% capacity. Um, as well as um, 25 for sports and recreation. I guess it's different than just your overall per, um, personal gatherings. So we're still going to personal gatherings or the, you know, I don't know what they call them, in-home gatherings or whatever that's called. We're still going by that, but it's my understanding that um, sports and recreation guidelines are actually different. We can actually receive waivers through the county, depending on what type of activities um, we are doing. Yeah, I'm not, I don't know about that. <laughs> um, I, I need to find out where you're getting that information from because the governor's order is the governor's order. If there, if he gave waivers, it would have to be the governor, not the county. So do you have anything in writing? I do. I know actually a couple other um, agencies have gotten waivers through the county. I can forward you the emails that I've received. Yeah, um, I, and it's the, let me look that up. It's a sports and recreation guide. Let me look it up now. Um, here. Um, updated rules. The sports and recreation guidelines. I know that we're sent that are um, different. Let's see. And that's look it up this way. I can't, we can't see it. Are you sharing the screen? Say that again. I, you cut out for a minute. Uh, we can't see it. Are you trying to share the screen or? No, so I can forward it to all of you. That was sent mm -hmm. um, from one of the other agencies that it was sent from the, the North town center when we inquired, cause they actually opened up things and we asked them about that. And they said that, um, they had received, they had been in communication with Erie County. They had received um, different information, arts and regulation guidelines and Erie County had um, that 50% capacity for them. Let's for hockey right here. Um, it would be for hockey. I don't think it's for anything else. And I, I'd like to see the actual. Yeah, I'll, I'll absolutely, as soon as I find it, I will, okay. where is it here? Uh -huh, here it is. Um, Sports and Recreation Master Guidance. Um, yeah, and send you this. Okay. What I have yeah, from the governor. Yeah, I'll send that to you. But again, we're keeping it to what the governor has anyways. Um, so it's, it's not, it's really a non-issue unless we wanted to increase mm -hmm. it, um, which we don't, we don't at the moment. We'd like to get back into it, you know, following the same guidelines we did um, mm -hmm in the fall. And I think it's, so because I'll send this to you. I think it's because of the zone we're in too. Don't forget. Um, cause we're in the orange zone. Right. Right. So, um, yeah. And then, like I said, fine. Since, since we're already doing it in the guidelines, but if we ever do, at least we'll have lines to go off of in the future, if we want to change how we're doing and hopefully we'll be out. So by the time you're doing some of this other stuff later in the, in the springtime, it should be fine. Or maybe at the end of January, I don't know how soon we'll be out of this orange zone. So, um, but I think we have to be careful that we're following. Right. It oh yeah, absolutely. And that's why I said um, like our special Olympics that we were looking at doing it um, starting you know, in the spring, because we could do it track and field and softball. So they're both outside sports. Um, so that would be a non-issue and special has a set um, policy that all programs to follow due to COVID anyways. So we would just input 
um, you know, that stuff we could run in the spring easily if it's outside, cause there's a lot less restrictions on that. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay, good. So that, does anybody have any further questions on those? i will start, um, February 1st, we wanted to keep that uniform and then they'll be running, um, roughly, I believe it's a five or six week, um, five, six week session. And then we'll be running probably an immediate set. Uh, following that so that we can get another crew of um, youth involved. Yeah, Jill, Brian Nowak here. I do, uh, I've got a couple questions and the first one uh, is relative to the winter and it spills over into the summer plan. As far as sure. uh, thermometers uh, and the other materials you need to do all of this safely, do you have the materials and equipment that you need to execute the plans? Yes, we do. We actually currently have thermometers, um, non-touch thermometers. We have enough gloves. Um, you know, we have enough. We actually have still have safe disposable masks that we received. Um, I've actually also purchased before um, masks, uh, the cloth, you know, three uh, tier masks get working the program so i am confident that it's a cdc um you know compliant mask uh, for anybody that's managing our programming um yeah we ha we do have thing we would need the only time we might need to increase things would be if summer if we are able to run more things we would need to increase it because they'd be running simultaneously we probably need more thermometers um you know more disposable masks like that Okay, I'm glad you mentioned the need for more thermometers because I was looking at the pool plan and I know you've got a list of materials needed for that. So if, you know, if we need you yeah. know, the plexiglass, the thermometers and these things, um, we should plan to try to do that sooner rather than later to try to get as much of the materials we would need for that plan as possible. And, you know, we met, you mentioned softball briefly and obviously we don't have to decide that mm -hmm. right now we're dealing with winter, but I'm glad that you brought it to our attention today. So we've got some time to think about it. And the last thing I wanted to bring up was the ID card expirations. Um, I'm yeah. imagining there was a decline in ID card renewals last year and you proposed an extension for a year um, what is that picture Correct. looking like in terms of the number of cards that were, were down compared to usual? Um, we're down, you know, this is due to our extension of the cards, but then again, you know, people really weren't able, um, to use them this past fall is, um, you know, the right thing to do. Um, mm -hmm. we're batting around, um, whether or not to extend them further. I believe it goes through the end of March, the year to decide that, you know, within the next month or so, um, you know, I'll get to you folks, since that's going to be over a year, um, I'd do another, uh, sort of deferral for the ID card. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't have a position one way or another. I just wanted to get as much People information as I could to, to, to see, you know, what's best practice there. Cause we got to consider the revenue side along with doing right by the residents. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. And I think that I would like the conversations to get started now. Like you mentioned about the pool and purchasing things. Um, no stuff is in short supply. So I'd like to you know start planning as soon as possible. I know we can't see the future and I and we don't know what we're looking at for summer, um, even spring that matter. But I, I would rather be prepared and have a plan so we can hit the ground running because we know thing and if we can run things I'm residents are going to be clear so they um want to be prepared you know pr to um implement it pretty quickly in my opinion right and a lot of the materials you mentioned if we don't necessarily use them for the pools we can use them for other aspects of your department or somewhere else in the town the plexiglass the thermometers and all that and the last thing was more a comment the situation with masks I know there's masks part of the plans for the pools and, and the other aspects of your plan. I just want to make sure that as more and more folks are getting mm -hmm. vaccinated, that we have a clear policy and we're just going by, you know, CDC guidelines, best practice that just because somebody gets the vaccination doesn't mean they don't have to wear a mask anymore. We should exercise an abundance of caution. And, you know, I see that in your plans and I appreciate that the, all the mask wearing being in the plan. Yes, absolutely. That's something that I would never um, stop with the mask wearing uh, until it was, you know, absolute, like um, the supervisor said, straight 
from it for everybody because I just feel like better safe than sorry um, mm-hmm. is my personal opinion. So, any other questions on winter, spring, um, you know, or anything else that we'd be bringing up? I, I'm happy to come back and once, um, you know, the spring, if we would do that again, talk about, you know, Special Olympics and those for Saturdays and some other things that we'd be bringing up in March. I'm happy to talk about that again if somebody wants um, before we. But like I said, I, I will send you everything we get. It's, but because it, we won't run if it is not able to be hosted outside. Those. And we'll just bring up the couple of summer things like the council member said, the pool obviously is we have three of them and, and you know, they, they are open. Um, you know, a week and they are open for, um, you know, one, 10 hours a day, other ones, um, you know, eight hours a day. So we have to make sure that we know, kind of know what we're doing so we can plan. We start steering and doing um, some of the pool maintenance in April so to get these mind because we kind of need to know um, what with that so we can get started on that uh, well as any further trainings that anyone would like to done things like that I'd like to research that and figure if it's necessary um, as I was saying with saw we've already run it last year we had an extremely successful year today and it was actually um, due to alcohol and some of and actually that team took care of their own individual that, um, you know, season, uh, compliance relatively good. Um, you're not going to get a hundred percent, unfortunately. Um, but you know, my staff was really good about anytime they saw somebody or ask if they were in the field or, you know, you're doing supposed to, they reminded them, um, you know, and the people were not aggressive about it. So, um, I think, that's reasonable to run again, unless we get into like a red zone or, or really go downhill. I think we could definitely run that um, again without many issues. The last one would be um, summer concerts in a camp. So summer concerts, I know we booking bands in February uh, norm in a normal. So I wanted to get that on everybody's mind as well. I know some bands have told us they've already been booked for some of this. So some people are going to be doing it. Um, the idea last year was to do a drive-in concert if possible. Uh, I don't know uh, if that would be another option that we could do. We could possibly do down hall um, and have the band play. We had hired out to have them play um, potentially like in the Ebo or under the covered shelter at the senior center. Um, or we could just mandate um, the 50% capacity and s- social distance and mark. But there's a couple options in there. Again, that does need to be decided tonight. I just wanted to get that in everyone's mind, um, you know, so we could decide it in the next couple of months and, and figure out if we want anybody or anything. Uh, most of the bands that we canceled, back, so it wouldn't be that difficult. Day, um, as you know, we have that formalized plan. Um, we would have, we would obviously again cut the number. We'd have the mask wearing. Um, you know, we would we would comply with all CDC regulations. But again, again print out our brochure in February for summer day. So uh, we would kind of need to know soon if we should start really revving up for that. Um, you know, because we start to, and I know we've had parents cast already, both via the Facebook page and email us if we're going to be running it. So again, I just want everybody's radar at this time. Are there any questions on those on summer? Well, um, I think statistically, it's Diane again. Um, yep. We might be able to do the camps because I think statistics have shown if you practice the right um, uh, preventative measures for the children, they're not as likely to carry it as adults. So you'd have to really get a very strict plan in place. But I think that the camps would be good for the kids. That's correct. And we actually have seen, obviously, with 
access program down here in our own space. Um, we're now more familiar with what is doable and what is not socially distance wise. So um, it's been a good learning experience too. And I think we can take some things we've learned from that program and utilize them in camp. Um, and I think three or four of my directors are actually teachers. Um, so they will all be coming from that bin, having been um, back to school this year. So they'll obviously be very aware of the regulations and, and things that they need to do. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. If you could really uh, look at that, I think because of it being summer, you can get them outside more. Uh, we'll probably just have to take. Yes, exactly. Yes, no, I would think. Right. Okay. And, and again, I just want to get on everyone's radar. I just want to make sure all of you are on board um, before we made anything official. Um, so, you know, just, it, you know, if, you worry, if we know one way or the other, then we'll, we'll get going. We'll gear up just like we would normally any other year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Jill? We have to move on. Jill, thank you very much. And I think this is a good start if you're going to do those. Nobody has any objections to those other pro the programs she wants to start right away, right? Immediately. So, okay. So go ahead. I guess we're the, for that. Those, those uh, super, supervisor, just quick question. Um, I may have to bring back a few staff, like especially um, for that learn to skate. We, we made a couple extra rink guards. So should I email out? Um, you yeah. know, the number of staff I'm thinking about bringing back, it wouldn't be significant. Um, but like some rink guards are only available, you know, they might only come in for the Friday and then some come in for Saturday. So it might seem like a lot of people, but they might be working one shift for us. And, and the only reason we need schools, they have to be obviously at a certain skill level of skating to instruct. So. Yeah. I, um, and I, we're meeting you myself and uh, council member Adam Zach are meeting on Thursday. So I'd like to go over that personnel listing too. So, but you, yeah, start emailing them and see who's available. I think it's a good idea. Okay, perfect. Perfect, thank you. Any other questions or from anyone? Okay, thank you, Jill. Thank, you, right. very, thank you very much. All right, uh, next we have Rachel Straker, our Director of Community Development. Hello. Hi, hi, hi Rachel. Um, I just wanted to take a couple minutes to get some feedback. I sent out a preliminary email last week regarding the round three CARES Act funding. Um, we have been allocated $864,606. Um, as part of the planning process, we did send out requests for proposals to the agencies that we typically deal with. Um, the Village of Depew, Village of Sloan, Youth and Rec, Western New York Law, Child and Family Services, and Belmont Housing. Mm -hmm. um, I, I did send out an email last week, like I said, uh, the proposals that we did get back. Um, and I can go over those quickly. Uh, Youth and Rec proposed a continuation of their summer lunch program uh, that was very successful last year. Um, so they would like to continue that. Um, the Western New York Law Center has proposed legal assistance for renters and homeowners. Uh, the assistance would be free to them um, and, and they can help with any issues that they face regarding mortgage or rent delinquencies. Um, they also proposed a small business legal clinic. Unfortunately, um, after going through regs and having conversations, that's something that we don't think will qualify, um, uh, but that was submitted also. And then Belmont Housing has a proposal. Currently, we are doing the rental and mortgage assistance payments, and they are looking to take that over with the round three funding for us. Um, oh, that would be nice, right? Yes, that would be extremely helpful. Because I think that's the one that we're seeing the most of people needing right now after all these months um, is the assistance. And I know your office can't handle all those. So yes, and it's anticipated also that once the moratoriums are lifted, there's somewhat interest in that program right now. But when everything is opened up and foreclosures and evictions can take place, there's going to be a massive flood. Mm -hmm. 
it's anticipated of people interested in those programs. And is, is there any more assistance for the small businesses? Just the, um, just the, the uh, counseling? Or? Well, we have, um, we currently have the small business assistant grant program that just came out uh, roughly two and a half weeks ago. Correct. So if, if we allocate funding to these three, um, the youth and rec summer lunch program, the free legal aid and Belmont for assistance, there's still approximately $116,000 remaining that can be allocated to other programs that we previously had. Mm -hmm. So um, we're having a public hearing on February 9th. I'm hoping that once it gets closer, I'll have a better idea of how the assistance for small businesses is going. So if we need to further allocate money, we can do that. Um, the, the thing I've been hearing about that uh, assistance for the small businesses is all there is is an email. There's no application online, correct? That is correct. Um, that was done intentionally mm. because there is a screening process before we send out applications. Um, we've actually had a bunch of inquiries where the people don't qualify so we don't want them to go through filling out the application and getting documentation together if they're not going to qualify. Okay. Then you have a, you hired somebody to do that for us, correct? We do. We contracted with the office of Harry Sickerman. He's okay. very knowledgeable on the CDG mm -hmm. regs. Um, and so, yes, we, we contracted with him for that program. Okay. Well, that was a good idea too, right? Yes. Rachel, Councilman Polarski here, Brian. Yes. Um, a couple questions for you. When when you say we contracted with someone to do like Harry Segelman or whatever, is that coming out of the administrative part or is that included as another line item under the CARES Act money? Um, it's actually two different pieces. Um, they had a flat rate um, to put the program guidelines together and get all of the application documentation everything that needed to be put together to get the program up and running. So that piece came out of the program administration line, and then they're charging a flat fee for application processing per application. So that is coming out of, that's considered program delivery, which comes out of the small business assistance line along with the actual assistance that we're providing. And a follow-up question, um, have you hired any new staff or extended hours or anybody in your office since we've taken over these CARES Act grants? We have not up until this point. We have not had a need to. Um, everybody is great in this office and knowledgeable and on top of everything and working together to get done what needs to get done. So we have not had a need for that at this point. So what is our plan then with the rest of the, because the first CARES Act funding, we took 20% off for additional support systems within the office there to administer this grant. And now the next grant is showing 10%, which would equal roughly 80K. What is our plan? Like, what's the need for that extra 10%? Can we put that back into direct services if we still have CARES Act money left in the last round, if we're not using it right now? If there's any funding left, it can be reallocated to a different activity. Um, we have currently used um, a portion of the original administration that was. So we do in our office uh, time allocation spreadsheets. Depending on what activities we're working on, we allocate our time to the specific funding source. So anybody that's spending time on anything CARES Act related is allocating their time to that activity. And then we reimburse the town out of that pot of money for that time spent on that activity. So then does that mean other areas of the town budget? Because for the most part, your department's self-funded through CDBG and now CARES Act money. So does Correct. that free up more money in the CDBG budget line items then? Or are we just not taking care of those projects and doing that work right now? Um, well, it'll free up money in the regular administrative line out of the regular CDBG funding. 
And if it gets to the point that that money is not needed, we can always reallocate that also to a regular CDBG activity. All right, that, that works for me because I'm just wanting to make sure we're not filling any gaps or anything like that. Because if you needed the support, we could justify, hey, why the 10% or the 20%, but I don't want to, you know, fill gaps here with CARES Act money when we can be getting most of that, if not all of it out to those in need, small businesses, residents, you know, rental assistance, stuff like that. Yes, I agree. And that's why I only took the 10% and not the 20%. We looked at what we have left from round one. Um, and what we've used. And so we thought that it wouldn't be realistic to take the full 20%, that 10% would be a better option. And is it safe to say if we don't use it, it will go back into the services though? Definitely. Anything that's not used can be reallocated to another activity. If it's, if it's the CDBG COVID funds, it can get reallocated to any other COVID activity that's been set up. Great, thank you. You're welcome. What about our seniors? Um, weren't we going to help the seniors? The senior yes. center last time is, did you yes. mention that here? Yes, so in round one, we allocated $82,579 to the senior center. Um, we have paid um, for air cleaners that were necessary. Um, a refrigerator, I believe that was necessary. Um, we're currently in the process of reimbursing the town for the van drivers that were doing the meals on wheels delivery. Mm -hmm. um, we're reimbursing the town for that. And I've had conversations with Carrie about continuing that into 2021 because we do have additional funding that we can carry that forward. Um, so we're estimating after the salaries are paid out from last year, that will still have around $50,000 allocated to the senior center for any needs that come up that we may be able to assist them with. There was a need that Carrie just mentioned about something with electrical, I thought. Um, did she come to you about that? I don't believe so. $2,000. I, I, I don't think I've heard anything about that, no. Okay, I guess we'll have to reach out to her. Um, I can send her, I can shoot her an email. Okay, maybe you could, if you wouldn't mind, if she has um, some money left uh, for that, that would help a little bit anyway. Yes. Rachel, okay. sorry, Brian Polarski again, one last question on my end. Um, sure. With the rentals assistance, and, and I don't know if it was asked before, or if it was answered before, when someone applies for rental assistance, does it go to the tenant or does it go directly to the landlord, that payment? It goes directly to the landlord. Great, thank you. Thanks. Councilman Brian Nowak here. Have you seen an increase uh, from the last time we spoke about the demand for that uh, rental assistance program? Because from what I've heard, at least at the county level, is the demand wasn't as high as initially anticipated. That is seemingly correct on our side also. When we orig originally rolled the program out, there was a massive influx of phone calls of people inquiring. And I believe we sent out approximately 60 applications of which we didn't get very many back, which is typical. People see the application and Unless they really are in need of the funding immediately, they're, they're overwhelmed by it. Um, but we have had a slow trickle of phone calls um, recently. We still send out applications here and there. I mean, I actually did have a conversation with um, Belmont recently about that. And Part of the issue is people are in the comfort zone knowing that they can't be evicted or foreclosed on at this point. They have that safety net. Mm -hmm. um, but we are anticipating that if and when that goes away, then, like I mentioned, there'll be a massive flood of people who really need to, to take action and, and put in their application to get that funding. So you would think it'd be wise to earmark that money, put it aside, and not reallocate it uh, until the eviction moratorium expires finally, because I think it's getting extended again, or has been extended. So once it's finally out of the way to have that money set aside? 
Yes. 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 It's currently been extended to January 31st of 2021. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and as far as um, admin costs, is there an admin cap that's spelled out in the CARES Act? Because I'm not recalling that anything was specified. It's the same um, admin cap that applies to regular CDBG funds, which is the 20%. Okay. So with the 10% we're calling for under the new chunk of money that's not going to get us into any trouble? No, not at all. Okay. I just want to make sure we're meeting those, uh, that 20% admin minimum. And as far as what to do with the extra money, I agree with the supervisor with small business assistance. I think that's a good idea. The rental assistance is a great idea, but one of the biggest needs, and we're seeing it in Western New York and all over the country is the, the increased demand on these food banks. And, you know, th this CARES Act funding is allowed to be put towards that thing. So I think that's something that uh, our town board should keep in mind going forward. It's been a big demand all over the place. And if we've got 116,000 left, um, we should consider using some of that towards um, towards food assistance, whether it's direct or indirect. You know, we got a refrigerator for the senior center. Food banks are in need for refrigerating food. There's all sorts of other things that can come up there. So I just want that to be on the agenda as a possible use of this fund, uh, uh, of this funding, because, you know, all this other stuff is great, but if you're not eating, it's not worthwhile. You know, everything else doesn't matter. Yes, definitely. And I have thought about that a lot. Um, and I was just looking at the numbers um, recently. So in the first round, we allocated $125,000 to food pantries. We sent out proposals to them asking what they thought they needed, what they thought they could use. And after allocating funds to all five food pantries, there's still $42,250 left of the round one funding. So I would be okay with allocating some money out of round three, um, but I'm just not sure exactly at this point what that number might look like. Yeah, and I don't know exactly what the number looks like either. I think we should reach out to, to all the different stakeholders there to see what things are looking like there. I know that, you know, the, once the demand ticked up from the beginning of COVID, it hasn't gone back to pre-COVID levels. There's still, you know, right. there's still a lot of pressure on them. Okay. I will reach out to them and, and, and get a better idea before we have the public hearing in February. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Rachel. Hey, Rachel? Yes. Um, Rick, Rick Brishnak? Uh-huh. On, on that rental assistance, um, you said the application's kind of complicated. Now, is that scaring off some of these people that really need the help? Is there assistance to, to help them fill these applications out? Because I see people that need it are in that position where they can't even fill the application out, you know, to yes. get it in. So is there a way to help them? It, yeah, it's not necessarily a complicated ap application. It's just there's a lot of questions and documentation that HUD requires. Okay. And that, we have we have always told people, even with our rehab applications, that if anybody needs assistance filling it out, we are here. We've actually sat down with applicants and gone through it, you know, line by line or or whatever assistance they need. Um, in the past, um, seniors, if any seniors have applied, we always um, say that that Jamie Acoff over at the senior center can assist seniors as well with the applications. So we do, we do that. Okay, very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Rachel, I swear this is the last question from me. <laughs> That's Brian. okay. Um, with the rental and homeowner and, and the mortgage assistance, does that include town tax taxes or school taxes in, that are escrowed into the mortgage? Or is it strictly just the mortgage? Um, unfortunately, it is strictly principal and interest on the mortgage. There were previously issues and questions about the money coming back to the town, um, and and I and that was a solution was for it to strictly be principal and interest. And actually, when we looked at some other places programs, they do they do the same thing. It's strictly for principal and interest. And would you happen to know of any programs? Because I, I don't, and that's why I'm asking. Um, that helps landlords out because they they still do have taxes due, and with the moratorium right. and being able to collect rent, there's still taxes due to the town, the county, and the school districts. You know, uh, come March and all that stuff. So, is there any assistance for landlords that aren't getting any revenue or income 
for their homes, but still have to make payments on them? I am not aware of any financial assistance programs to landlords at this time. Um, but that's something that I can definitely research through um, the CDBG regs and see if maybe that's even something that we could assist with. Thank you. I appreciate that. Even if we could help they have the landlords help them pay if they have a mortgage on their house. You know what I'm saying? Yes, if they have, if it's a landlord that has a mortgage on the property and they reside there, um, they could apply for mortgage assistance. Mm -hmm. the, the, the one thing is with this funding is the, the applicants have to be low income prior to COVID also. So, but if it's a landlord and they live in a duplex or whatever, and they are low income, they can definitely apply for the mortgage assistance on their own behalf. And, and I'm glad you mentioned that because that was what I was thinking is that these funds are usually to help low mod income areas. And, you know, the way we could solve this issue is through the already existing tenant assistance program. And that if we do want to assist the landlord, it's to everybody's benefit that the tenant, because the tenant has to apply for that assistance, correct? Correct. So, you know, even if the landlord and the tenant work together to fill out that application, I don't know if that's allowed, but that's one possible creative way to solve this issue. That way, you know, everybody's getting help. The tenant doesn't have the rent stacked up against them. And then the landlord is getting the income that they were getting pre-COVID, you know, because this, once this eviction moratorium gets lifted, it's going to be pretty disruptive for a lot of people. Definitely. And we actually just had an instance of that. Um, we had a tenant who called and got actually two applications and they didn't fill them out and send them back. And the landlord actually called us and asked if we could send the application to him and he is going to uh, contact the tenant and work with the tenant to get it filled out and get it back to us. Yeah, the benefit of what we're doing here with the tenant applying is that everybody gets assisted in this regard. And, you know, just if that's the way we have to go about this, um, maybe that's the best solution to the problem rather than direct landlord assistance. I mean, uh, but, you know, we can look into other options. Yes, yeah. definitely. All right, Rachel, we're going to have to move on. Um, okay. thank you. And then I think any board member, I, I think these are all great ideas. So um, please contact Rachel directly because I think we got the conversation going. So um, if you need more, uh, or you want to give Rachel some more ideas, I I'm, I'm, I'm think that that would be a good thing. So yes. Thank, you. thank okay. you. It would be greatly appreciated. All right. Thanks, Rachel. All right, we have to get through the uh, town board resolution items. We actually have a very long meeting tonight because this is our rework. <clears throat> meeting. So um, just stop me um, if you want to stop and talk about any resolution. So resolution one is the transfer of funds. Resolution two, warrant. Uh, resolution three is uh, the rescinding of the resolution 2017-689. Resolution four is the award of bid for the snow and ice removal. Uh, and same thing for uh, resolution five. Uh, resolution six is the negative de uh, de um, secret declaration for the high base storage garage uh, at R Rhine Road. Remember we had that presentation. This is just that we're not approving anything else tonight, just the negative seeker. And we are, oh, we are, we are accepting the site plan also for that. Uh, then we are calling for the public hearing um, related to what we discussed with Rachel. So that's on the agenda tonight. And then some of the routine items are uh, establishing the town board meeting dates for 2021 and 20, uh, first meeting of 2022 and establishing the salaries of all the non-union town officials and, em and employees and establishing the holidays for 2021 and the first holiday of 2022. Uh, Jill Gorman asked us to pull resolution 12, part-time wage adjustments, because there were, um, she was meeting with Chris and I on Thursday and she wanted to do some some changes. So, um, Madam Clark, can we we pull this resolution? 
Yes, I have that noted. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Can I just interject? Yes. I mean, there are people that are on there that are not youth and rec. Do you want to? Oh, that's, uh, oh. you know, there's probably four or five people that are not youth and rec people on okay. there. I mean, we could pull the whole thing and have to do a retro for, for some of these people or, mm -hmm. or we could have Amen. the, uh, we could amend the resolution and um, and uh, include the school crossing guard. And um, I think the last three names are from senior center. Okay, in the last three, the rec attendant in the senior center, clerk part time, and the recreation attendant is all in the senior center. Yes. Okay. Is everybody okay if we just amended this resolution? I'm fine with it. Yes. And the, because some of these other um, people uh, are all youth and rec and um, Jill wanted to discuss that. So, okay, thanks Brian for making that. And Madam Clerk, if you could make a note of that amendment. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And then we have uh, the uh, designation of the official newspaper and designating the depositories. <laughs> 15 is the direct depositories to accept supervisor's facsimile signature. 16 is our pro professional legal bond counsel services. I actually had a question on 16 mm -hmm. uh, for Brian Krause. On letter H or item H says audit of departments. Are, I'm assuming those are picked at random every year. Is that picked by the outside consultant or is that picked by folks inside the town? Are you oh. talking about 16 or 17? Because oh, I think you're talking about uh, the resolution that says retain outside a accounting consultant for 2021. All right, that's 17. We'll move on to that one. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, the numbering is all messed up on my head yes. because of the change. Yes. Okay. Go ahead, Brian. Yeah, it was 17. So with regard to 17, I mean they they audit um, specific departments generally. I mean it's any of the audit uh, any of the departments that are receiving cash. So that would be, you know, uh, it would be town clerk, it would be justices, it's the senior department and youth and rec. Okay, so as long as the department is receiving cash, they're on this list. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Okay, 18 is a routine uh, authorized tax credit for the village of Depew. 19 is retaining our foreign language interpreters. 20 is retaining our stenographers. And with 21, we have to readopt our investment policy. And I believe that's quite a few pages. 22 is our um, Policies and procedures for procurement, our procurement policy. Twenty-three is um, uh, execute lease agreement for infrastructure network equipment. Twenty-four is to authorize the town clerk to invest tax monies. 25 is a modification to our prohibited use of town property policy. And I, yes. Jerry, yeah. On 25, uh, if you read through that, is there any penalty involved if somebody does misuse town property? Well, they're in violation of the, the um, actual policy. Yes. So there's discipline involved for that. Any policy. But it doesn't say anything. Neither did the old one. <laughs> but yeah, we, but that's... A, I know what we've been through before and I'm not being picky about it, but basically it was like our social media policy. There was no penalty involved. So what does it really do? Suggested but behavior. It's a policy. And I think that because we're a government agency, we can discipline somebody for not following the policy. Um, do I have the um, John Dujak on the call? Our attorney. You're muted, John. 
So the question was, I, I'm here. Sorry. Okay. The town uh, prohibited use of town property policy. I mean, what are we supposed to say in there? Termination if they don't follow it or, I mean, the old one didn't have anything and we just added the one sen sentence about the actual remote work. Right, but I think that that was the problem uh, even going back years ago, Diane, that there was, it was just a policy, which I think in most cases was more or less a suggestion to do's and don'ts. But even with this one here, so say, if somebody uses the town tools or a lawnmower, whatever, it's a immaterial, a computer, a telephone. Uh, if they do violate it, uh, there's no penalty. And I mean, you know, there's nothing in there as far as, uh, you know, and I don't know, you know, while John's listening, uh, mm -hmm. should we have a penalty in it? I mean, what can we do if we don't? Well, why do I, I like, I'd like to make them, um, well, I'd like to amend it then and just say. Oh, Diane, if I could, before that, before you get. Okay. I, I didn't draft it. I mean, it was, I mean, this was like Diane mentioned, this was previously drafted. 2015, 100. Jerry, yeah, I, part of I, that. I think this policy has been in place and, you know, with, with the current, um, culture of, of what we're dealing with in terms of laptops and and a lot of property that's being used remotely um I, I thought the spirit of this was to ensure that everything was being um used appropriately as far as you know work related um in terms of uh the penalty aspect of it my understanding is that the spirit is whatever contract or union rules that particular uh, faction may be operating under, you know, would be subjected to, you know, that disciplinary um, procedures. So, you know, you can use whatever example you want, whether it's, you know, the police, um, you know, taking the car to California or um, highway, you know, taking something home and using it or, um, you know, rec, you know, taking whatever. I think that was, the understanding and it was merely um, just an extension of um, that amendment to that. If that's different, then uh, somebody else will have to speak to that. I mean, many of our policies don't have the actual penalty. I mean, I guess we probably should go through them all then. Well, that's something that's been discussed over the years, Diane, but it comes down to votes. You know, a lot of them we just couldn't, couldn't get through. But it's like I said, it's... Um, Look at what we went through over a piece of angle iron. Mm -hmm. Realistically, what did that cost the town? You know, and and, and this, this is my my feeling, and I'm not uh, you know I'm not pointing fingers, throwing stones at anybody. Does anybody talk to the union about this? Do we get any input from them? Gary, this was a policy from 2015 that you, you and I, Mary put into place, just so you know. No, Mary and I did not put it into place. The town board did at that time, Diane. Well, you were the mover and Mary was the second or vice versa. Right, right. So it's just adding certain language. So now you're splitting hairs here. So what if, was if your I, discussion with if, the union? Diane, if, or if I could. Yes. Um, To Council Member Kaminsky's um, point, I, I, my opinion is we wouldn't have to discuss this with the union. This this is not, you know, uh, a, a negotiated aspect of that. I, I think this is something that's more of, for lack of a better word, a reminder of you know you bring up the angle iron. I, I mean that might be a good example. I mean so if, if the angle iron, you know, was loaned, borrowed, or whatever. Um, well, th this policy, I think, reiterates the fact that that shouldn't be taking place. Um, you know, so now I have a laptop at home. You know, I think the spirit of this policy amendment is to remind me or put me on notice that I should only be using this for, you know, the, the work that's at hand, not surfing the web and, and, and getting on Amazon and, you know, betting and all that stuff. That, that, that's my understanding of it, uh, Councilmember Kaminsky. Yeah. Okay. Well, Bye. And it was probably suggested that we readopt this because of the angle iron situation, like John Dujak said. So if if we make reference to discipline, we should do it in a very general way, I would think. I'm fine with amending it to do that, but 
in a very general way that just makes reference to our existing um, processes and procedures relative to discipline. I don't have a proposal for, for precise language, but just something like that to recognize that we have discipline structures already in place, whether it's through the bargaining unit contracts or other town policies that deal with discipline directly. We can make reference to that here uh, just to say that there are disciplinary means. If you don't follow this, you're subject to discipline, something like that. I don't know if anyone's got a recommendation on exact language. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, I'm fine with whatever. I, I just don't feel we need it because I think the the punishment would fit the crime. If somebody's stealing a pen is a lot different than if somebody is stealing a, a lawnmower or a compressor or just taking it home and borrowing it, you know, is going to be different for each incident. I, I mean, if I could, again, I mean, to, to be perfectly honest with you, I mean, uh, this 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 policy is, is just what it is. It's a policy. However, um, and you can take whatever example you want to use. Um, you, you can't use a dump truck, you know, for personal use. Um, you know, Lisa Bolognese can't use the computers for her for her family, um, so on and so forth. So, I mean, I think to Diane's point, um, it, it's kind of speaks for itself. But to pigeonhole it. I'm not so sure that would be um, something that would be prudent. I, I think we should just. Irrespective of this it. policy, you still have, you know, town employees have to adhere to what's in here. You can't use town property for personal use, period. I mean, that, that's, 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 that, that, that's, that's statutory law that everybody should adhere to. Um, I think this is just a friendly reminder. Um, I understood. In the form uh, of Greg, policy. Understood. Uh, and we've got the employee handbook. And like you said, there's statute and other, other areas that deal directly with discipline. So I can see uh, how, what you're saying here and why it's not exactly necessary. Okay, I'd like to leave it just as is um, because we've had this before and we have several other policies and I think the social media policy is a little different because of the fact that it was a brand new policy and um, there was just no teeth to it, whereas there's teeth to this one since just very basic, can't take town property. Okay, 26, um, authorization to purchase the closed circuit cameras. And Karen, then I'll, I'll hand it over to, for the um, personnel issues, the personnel. Um, <laughs> Uh, number 27 is the hiring and termination of part-time and seasonal employees. And in the resolved, it's uh, referring to part-time court officer, Robert Samoic, who was appointed, appointed at our last town board meeting, is hereby classified as a provisional employee. And resolution 28 is the appointment of an assistant superintendent of wastewater pump station, Michael Malobecki. If anybody has questions regarding that, I believe John Nietzsche was in contact with you regarding that. Uh, resolution 29 is to appoint and reappoint bingo inspections and the chair people. If anybody has questions regarding those issues, please let me know. Uh, resolution number 30 is reappointments to the EMS board and all of the local fire stations are represented and so forth. So let me know if you have any questions regarding that. Karen. Resolution 30, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Karen, it's Chris. I just have yes. a question regarding number 30 resolution mm -hmm. that I just now noticed. How come nobody from the town board is on this on this board, you last time I was on the board. Brian Noack. I, well, council member Noack is on the on the on the list. Where is he? I didn't see him. 
Fourth one from um, the bottom. He's Fourth about bottom. three quarters of the way oh, down. I'm sorry. I didn't see you, Brian. I apologize. Okay. So if anybody now. else wants to join Brian Nowak, I'm sure he'd enjoy their company. Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Brian. <laughs> and reappoint member of the planning board, if there's any questions about that. And we have reappointment of the Traffic Safety Commission. And if you have any questions regarding that, let me know. And we have reappointments also to the Veterans Affairs Committee. And then reappointment of a zoning board member. And also reappointments to the plumbing board. Um, Karen, can I interrupt yes. just one second? That resolution 34, uh, the sponsor should have been council member Adam Zach and second by Supervisor Benchkowski. If you can make that amendment, that would be great. I will, thank you. Thank you. And then we have a travel authorization, which isn't actually travel at all because mm -hmm. it's going to be virtual to the uh, Association of Towns Conference. This will be a very big change, um, but I'm sure it'll be very successful. And that's all I have for tonight. Hey, Karen? Yes. I'm sorry, this is John. Um, what was the Association of Towns comment? Uh, that it's all virtual. Oh, it is virtual this year. Okay. I didn't. It is virtual. Oh, yeah. We don't want to send you into New York City, John. Very disappointed. Very disappointed. That's uh... Well, you won't have to buy a $14 Diet Coke or Diet Pepsi or whatever <laughs> yeah. you drink, right? <laughs> and I did, I thought, I thought I sent the email out to the board members that this might be your chance. There's some very good um, educational seminars that they provide. And, um, we, you and know. Diane, you're right. Given it's virtual, it will be it's an excellent hours. opportunity for people mm -hmm. to take part in it. And I know it's $300 per person, no travel. I think this would be an excellent opportunity for town board members to participate. And there are many different classes available. I know that Diane has participated, Brian Krause has for years. Um, I, and I know that Jeff Switek is a primary uh, mm -hmm. provider of uh, services or you know, training and so forth. So this may be an excellent year to be able to participate without having to travel to New York City hate to say the reason why, but I think it is an excellent opportunity. All right, we got to move on, but it is only $100 for board members if you're not going for any kind of certification. I believe Brian Krause and John Duge. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to mention, it, it says 300 on that resolution because for John, the legal stuff costs more for, okay. for continuing awesome. legal education. So everybody else- Thank you, Brian. Not to exceed 300, <laughs> and it's much less than that. Right. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you, Brian. Thank you. Okay. So uh, we have to get into executive session. I'd like to make that motion. I'll uh, second. Uh, all right. <laughs> Let me make the motion first. Sure. Uh, we need to go into executive session to discuss the proposed lease of real property. And I have a second by council member Nowak. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. We will uh, reconvene at seven for the regular board meeting.